This little boy interrupted the judge right in the middle of an adoption hearing, shocking everyone in the room, including his foster parents. When he finally spoke up, he revealed something completely unexpected that made the judge end the proceeding immediately. As Sarah Kozad and her husband, Stuart Shank, stared at the disbelieving face of the middle-aged judge, the feeling of fear and anxiety suddenly overcame them. They hoped to have a smooth adoption hearing. However, it felt like that would take a lot of work. For the most part, they understood why anyone would find this particular adoption process skeptical. The couple were still in their mid-twenties and were adopting foster kids aged 13 and 6, respectively, a far cry from the typical adoption proceedings one saw in the courtroom. The judge stared blankly at them, unsure what to make of the union. You think they all agree that this adoption ought to go forward? She asked the hypothetical question to no one in particular, yet Kozad still spoke up instinctively, trying to plead their case. But before the judge could respond, Deshaun, the 13-year-old, cut in unexpectedly, bearing the most baffling news. The courtroom fell silent at the interruption, giving him the audience he wanted. Meanwhile, Kozad and Stewart stared at their soon-to-be teen son in surprise, their minds racing with multiple questions. The couple had expected such bizarre behavior from his six-year-old brother, Michael, who was always full of surprises but never Deshaun. He had always been calm and mature, especially in serious situations. Therefore, you could imagine their surprise. Kozad wondered what had prompted him to speak up now, and she feared the judge's reaction if things went south. Just like she feared, the hearing was about to take an unexpected turn. In a few minutes, they would witness how the weight of his words would lead the entire hearing to an abrupt end, forever defining the course of their lives. For years, Kozad had always dreamed of fostering children. She was so bent on it that she mentioned it 10 minutes into her first date with Stuart. Luckily for her, Stuart shared the same sentiments, making their union the perfect match. From then on, the couple remained steadfast in actualizing that dream, and it soon became more than a mere ambition to them. Months later, they got married in their home state, Washington, and two weeks after their honeymoon, they officially began their fostering dream. Cosette felt delighted at the speed at which they were going. At long last, she would have all that she longed for. Nothing could possibly dampen her mood, or so she thought. The couple faced some constraints when they began their plans to foster children. The first and most pressing was that they were in their early 20s with little to no experience in parenting. While 21 was the minimum age for foster parents in most U.S. states, Kozad and her husband were 23 at the time, which was still within the required age bracket. However, they worried that this particular factor could still prove damaging and limiting in their journey as foster parents. Regardless of their fears, the couple decided to take baby steps in their approach, leading to their next constraint. How could they start as newlyweds and new parents? The question hung in the air for most of their planning phase, and it only took the intervention of a social worker for them to make notable progress on the topic. The caseworker suggested that Kozad and Stewart take in toddlers and newborns for a start, which they complied wholeheartedly. Furthermore, as they did this, they took classes on how to shelter toddlers on the side. For the most part, the Shanks, particularly Kozad, found the experience thrilling. They immersed themselves in this new lifestyle of embracing newborns and caring for them for several days, weeks, and even months. Then, when it was time for reunification, they went through the painful process of parting ways with these kids. The pattern continued for months, with the Shanks welcoming kids into their home and caring for them before eventually reuniting them with their families. The cycle seemed endless, but that was until Michael walked into their lives. As per the usual pattern, Kozad and Shank were assigned to care for little Michael, who was three years old at the time. The deal was for the couple to take him in for only two days, after which he would be taken back and assigned to someone new. Kozad was more than content with the arrangement. At this point, they had already fostered over 12 kids before him, so nothing seemed out of the ordinary. Soon after, the 23-year-old would realize how wrong she had been to have made such an insinuation. Michael captured their hearts like no child before him had in the two days he lived with them. When the time for his departure drew near, the couple would urge the social worker to extend his visit by a week. It continued that way as time passed, with Kozad asking for an extension and Michael staying longer than anticipated. Gradually, these visits turned into something more profound and prolonged. Michael's stay with the Shanks grew from that first week into a week and then into months. Subsequently, these would eventually culminate into three years, a staggering record the couple had never made with other foster kids in the past. However, they had not foreseen this unimaginable change the first few months they took Michael in their care. At this point, the little boy no longer felt like a stranger in their own home, as he had practically become a member of the family. But unfortunately, all good things eventually had to come to an end, and Michael's days in the Shank abode began to get numbered. The couple had to consider reunification like they usually did in their foster care lifestyle. 
They received a stark and harsh reminder of this fact when Deshaun visited one day. That day, Kozad and Stewart agreed to supervise a sibling visit with the then 10-year-old Deshaun. Michael's excited reaction to seeing his older brother made the couple realize the harsh truth they had been putting off for quite some time. Michael and Deshaun had to be together. It took a lot of willpower for Kozad to come to terms with this fact and move on with the reunification. But with time, she eventually accepted it. Seeing Michael play and laugh with Deshaun was unlike anything they had seen before, and it opened their minds to another possible option they could try, fostering both boys. As time passed, the social worker informed Kozad and her husband that the boys' parents were unavailable for reunification. This meant that the minute they left their care, they could end up in another foster home and might even be separated in the long run. The thought scared Kozad beyond reasoning. She could not fathom the idea of both boys leading separate lives away from each other. To tackle this problem, she brought the idea of fostering the boys to Stuart and was thoroughly pleased when he agreed to it. However, they faced one minor problem. Taking in Deshaun would mean catering for a preteen, a skill they didn't possess in their knowledge box. Moreover, the foster parents only had a 13-year age gap with Deshaun, making them considerably young to be actual parents to him. Kozad worried that their young age wouldn't fit the spectrum in the long run and would consequently defeat the essence of foster parenting. Hesitant, they thought of other alternatives, hoping to arrive at a more favorable solution. But the more they brainstormed, the more they realized their options were slim and still led them to their initial plan of fostering both. With no other solution in sight, they sought ways to fix the plan rather than run away from it. In that case, they took classes on how to handle a soon-to-be teenager and when they felt prepared, they welcomed Deshaun with open arms. Kozad and Stuart grew to love Deshaun during their first few weeks together. Unlike Michael, who was reserved and gentle most of the time, Deshaun lit up the room with his empathetic and social self. Their contrasting personalities offered the perfect balance for the eccentric couple, and they knew they wouldn't have it any other way. But when the topic of reunifying them with their family arose once again, Kozad and Stuart found themselves at the crossroads again. However, things were different this time around. Instead of deliberating on it for a long time, they took the bold step of legally adopting the boys. Overcome with excitement for the new chapter they were about to embark on, the couple informed Deshaun and Michael, hoping to get a similar reaction from them. But while little Michael was pleased with the idea, Deshaun's response was unreadable. He simply flashed Kozad a small smile and moved on from the discussion by engaging in his private business. This lukewarm reaction made the young woman think he was unhappy with their decision, and looking at how he had just interrupted the judge right there in the courtroom reinforced this fear within her. Kozad and Stewart expected little Michael to speak out of turn and do something indescribable that could grate on the judge's nerves and change the course of the hearing. But unbeknownst to them, Deshaun's sudden move was about to do the exact same thing they feared but in the most unexpected way possible. Having successfully gained the attention of everyone in the courtroom, Deshaun went on to express himself. Everyone expected to hear some negative response, considering the note of urgency his action carried. However, the words that left his mouth came as an absolute shock to everyone, including Kozad. The 13-year-old expressed his love for his new parents. They all love us, he stated before adding, We love them. Our whole family is the best thing we ever had. I'm glad to have these people in my life. I'm glad to be their son. His words shook Kozad, making her cry in her seat before the judge. But Deshaun was not done yet. He still had more to say, and it later turned out that this final note was the defining factor in this hearing, the one trigger that led to its quick end. With a beseeching look, the little teen told the judge, They're the best thing I ever had. If I could wish for anything in the world, I would wish I could just love these people for the rest of my life. His voice sounded like he was urging her to make the life-changing decision they were all itching for legally signing them into the Shanks' custody. And luckily for them, it worked. Moved by the heartwarming display, the judge responded, If I had any doubts, they're gone now. And with that statement, she finalized the adoption without hesitation, ending the hearing at once. It was an easy win for the Shank family. They quickly left the courtroom to celebrate with their friends and family at a donut party. What's more, the boys rode in a limo as a sign of the good life they would inevitably have with their new family. After the celebration ended, Deshaun and Michael took in the last name Shank, officially and legally belonging to the family they dreamed of having. Kozad and Stewart's story became an inspiration to many. At a young age, they had not only fostered over 14 kids, but also adopted two spectacular ones, despite the growing challenges they sensed along the way. Even after their adoption, they never once gave up on their dream of fostering kids. In fact, following the hearing, they welcomed a 14-year-old into their abode because he desperately needed a place to stay. Together with Michael and Deshaun, 
the family continued to foster more children, specifically those who found settling down in foster homes challenging. These included LGBT plus youth, teen moms and victims of abuse and sex trafficking. The couple had done what many couples, shelters, and government offices hardly considered, open their homes and hearts to kids in desperate need of love, care, and provision. The Shanks truly believed that their benevolent acts were the most rewarding thing they could do, as it was a given for kids to be loved by their families no matter the situation. What a beautiful story. Does Kozad's parenting style inspire you in any way? Would you also adopt a teen child if given the chance? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and see you in our next video.